Today we are going to talk about normal venous return curve. As we are discussing the chapter of cardiac output, venous return and their regulation. So it's important to discuss the venous return curve. What exactly is venous return? Venous return is simply the amount of blood that returns to the heart every minute. Cardiac output was basically the amount of blood that is pumped by the heart per minute or every minute. Venous return is the amount of blood that returns to the heart every minute. Now, a lot of factors basically affect it or affects the cardiac output. Similarly, a lot of factors affect the venous return. The three most important determinants of the venous return are right atrial pressure, the pressure at the right atrium. Here we have the heart, right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle. So pressure at the right atrium is one parameter which affects the venous return. The second thing is the degree of filling of the systemic circulation. Now here we have the systemic circulation. The blood is being pumped by the heart into the aorta and it goes into all the systems of the body. Now the degree of filling of the systemic circulation, the amount of blood that is present in this circulation and the tone and the pressure in this circulation is basically the degree of filling of the systemic circulation and it is another parameter which will determine the venous return because it helps in pushing the blood towards the heart and finally resistance to the blood flow now the resistance offered by the blood vessels at different level to the flow of the blood is another parameter that affects the venous return now to simply discuss the venous return curve, we see that normally at the normal right atrial pressure, at the normal right atrial pressure, the venous return is 5 liters per minute here. Here at 0 millimeter of mercury right atrial pressure, when he, here we have the 0 right atrial pressure. The venous return, the venous return or the amount of blood that is returning to the heart every minute is 5 liters per minute. So in a normal person with normal right atrial pressure of 0, then the venous return is 5 liters per minute. Now what happens if the right atrial pressure increase or it decreases? So we see that if the right atrial pressure starts increasing here we have zero here it is decreasing and here it's increasing if the pressure here starts increasing it will be very difficult for the blood in the systemic circulation to come here so as soon as the the pressure in the right atrium starts increasing or the pressure here starts increasing then the blood it is very difficult for the blood to come here or return to the heart so the venous return the venous return starts decreasing it starts decreasing and a point comes a point comes at 7 millimeter of mercury at 7 millimeter of mercury where there is almost no venous return or the venous return becomes zero so in a normal heart with normal right atrial pressure and normal venous return at 0 millimeter of mercury we have 5 liters per minute of venous return coming to the heart. If the right atrial pressure starts increasing due to any reason, for example the heart is unable to pump due to any pathology. So if the heart is not pumping the blood here will not be moving out of the heart. So it will stay here and the more blood will be collecting here and the pressure here will starts will start increasing. Now as the pressure here is started increasing, it is very difficult for the blood here to come here because the pressure is increasing but, but the blood will keep on coming here. The blood will keep on coming towards the right atrium unless and until the pressure in the right atrium reaches 7 millimeter of mercury and that's the point where the venous return will become zero 
and that 7 mm of mercury level is known as mean systemic filling pressure. As we discussed that the venous return is determined by the right atrial pressure and the filling of the systemic circulation. So that level, that 7 mm of mercury pressure or level is known as mean systemic filling pressure. It is just like a like an engine or a car which is moving uphill. It is moving uphill and it has like a capacity of 7. It has the capacity of 7 anything. 7 millimeter of mercury or 7 kilometer per hour or 7 whatever. It has a capacity of 7 that that is the maximum capacity that it can attain to reach the top of the mountain. Now, as long as this the, the resistance to this engine, this car or this machine has not reached the 7, it will keep on moving towards the top of the mountain. But if the pressure here or the resistance at the top of the mountain or the resisting force which is stopping this engine or this car from moving up in, goes or increases more than 7 or it becomes for example 8 then the total power of this engine is 7 and it cannot overcome 8. Similarly the total power or the total mean systemic filling pressure the pressure with which the blood is returning to the heart is 7 millimeter of mercury. So once the pressure in the right atrium once the pressure in the, the right atrium has reached the level of 7 millimeter of mercury it is it is impossible for the blood to return towards the right atrium or the heart so the venous returns become zero and that point is known as the mean systemic filling pressure because that is the maximum capability that is the maximum filling pressure of the blood with which it is returning towards the heart now what happens if the right atrial pressure starts decreasing now, if the right atrial pressure starts decreasing, it is normally a 0 millimeter of mercury. But if it starts decreasing like minus 1, minus 2, minus 4, minus 8, at the level of around minus 2 millimeter of mercury, the, the venous return, the blood returning, returning towards the right atrium would increase slightly and it would reach this point. It would reach this point. Now from this point onward, it would slightly increase above the 5 liters per minute. But above this point, even if the right atrial pressure starts decreasing from minus 2 to minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6, minus 8, there will be no more increase. There will be no more increase in the venous return or there will be no more blood coming towards the right atrium. So this level, this is considered as a plateau. This is a plateau or a straight line. Because once the pressure in the right atrium has fallen below the zero level, once it has fallen below the zero level, the veins in the thorax, the blood vessels in the thorax, they collapse. They collapse due to low pressure. Because the pressure has decreased, so they collapse and they will no, not allow more blood to return. So the venous return cannot increase. The venous return cannot increase even with the decrease in the right atrial pressure. With the increase in the right atrial pressure, slowly and gradually towards this level of 7 mm of mercury, the, 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 the venous return almost uh, returned to zero level. But with the decreasing right atrial pressure, there is a slight increase and after that level, we see a plateau. Even if the right atrial pressure reaches a level of minus 50 or minus 60 millimeter of mercury, there will still be no more increase. There will be still no more increase in the level of venous return or the amount of blood that returns to the heart because 
because the veins are not capable of it they collapse in the low pressure the low pressure basically collapse these blood vessels in the thorax so they are unable to allow more blood and the normal level is considered as a plateau and it will continue like this so the normal venous return the venous return is basically the amount of blood that returns to the heart every minute and the venous return can be plotted on the venous return curve the venous return is basically dependent upon the right atrial pressure the pressure in the right atrium the degree of the filling of systemic circulation or the amount of filling in the systemic circulation the pressure generated in the systemic circulation or the amount the volume of blood that is present in the circulation and finally resistance to the blood flow the amount of resistance that is offered to the blood flow these parameters basically determine the venous return if we plot the venous return we see that at normal right atrial pressure at normal right atrial pressure of 0 we have a normal venous return of 5 liters per minute if the right atrial pressure starts increasing then the venous return starts decreasing and it reaches the zero level at the right atrial pressure of 7 mm of mercury and that level is known as mean systemic filling pressure because that is the maximum amount of force that is the maximum amount of force which the the blood can apply or the vessels can apply to push the blood towards the towards the heart so we consider the example of an a car or an engine which can move uphill with the power of 7 only once that power is overcome or if the resistance is more than 7 7 then it cannot go to the top so similarly the blood can only move till the power of 7 mm of mercury if the resistance is more than 7 mm of mercury then the blood won't be able to move there and if the right atrial pressure starts decreasing there will be a slight increase in the venous return above the 5 liters per minute level but after that there will be a plateau there will be no more increase there will be no more increase in the venous return even if the right atrial pressure falls to a level of minus 50 or minus 60 mm of mercury this is because the the veins the blood vessels in the thorax they collapse under low pressure and they does not allow they do not allow the more amount of blood to returns toward the heart so that's about the normal venous return curve thanks a lot for watching the video